Hey guys, so I don't normally do what if scenarios, but today we're going to do what if scenario. What if the Soviet Union hadn't been the Soviet Union, but had been a capitalist Russia during the Second World War? Would that have changed anything? And the question comes from Alexei. He says, hello, Tick. I'd like to ask a somewhat unusual question. How do you think uh, would Russia have fared better during the war if the Bolsheviks had been crushed during the Civil War and some kind of democracy and market economy had been established? Mainly it's about preparation to the war and rapid industrialization, collectivization, with all achievements and disasters they brought along. Would Russia be capable of becoming an industrial power and build its military fast enough or maybe would it have surpassed the USSR's, USSR's achievements uh, to be ready for a German invasion? Would it alter Hitler's plans to invade Russia? I know it's a slippery slope thing to make such speculations, but I would appreciate to hear your thoughts in the matter. Thank you very much for your videos. Okay, so let's just go back a second here. One of the reasons why Hitler was going east apart from the resources, the oil, the food, etc., and Lebensraum, one of the reasons was because he didn't like the Bolsheviks. He thought the Jews were behind Bolshevism and they were trying to dominate the world. So if the Bolsheviks had lost the Civil War, then in theory, would Hitler have had a reason to go east? Or would he have even been elected? Um, because during the Weimar Republic... You know, there was this fear of, oh, the Bolsheviks or the Marxists are going to get in. So therefore, we're not going to vote for them. We're going to vote for Hitler. And so would he have had the support uh, he would have needed in order to get in? And would he have had the ideology and the backing behind that in order to say, yes, we definitely still need to go east? Um, I suppose because he didn't really like democ uh, he didn't like democracy and he didn't like capitalism either, which he also thought was part of the Jewish conspiracy. So maybe he still would have been able to say, yes, we still need to go east, but nah, I don't even know if he would have got elected. However, let's just assume that he does and that he is going east. Uh, then how would Russia now, because it wouldn't have been Soviet, because um, the, the Soviet means council in Russia, uh, Russian, and actually means, so when the Bolsheviks got in, it was the trade unions or the trade union, you know, uh, workers' councils, so workers' Soviets, they were the ones in power. So it wouldn't have even been the Soviet Union, it would have been a social democratic Russia or of some sort. And I don't know if they would have even put a free market economy in there, because you say about market economy, it's not even sure if they would have done that. If it would have been social democratic or something like that, then it may not have even been a market economy. Um, but it would there wouldn't have been in, uh, collectivization, at least not to this level, and industrialization, would it have happened to the same extent? So let's go with the scenario. Okay, it is a democracy. Maybe, let's say the February re revolution had happened, but the October one hadn't, or if it had, it had been crushed, and something like the February sort of establishment had taken place, or like a Weimar Republic establishment, but in Russia. Let's just go with that. Well, there's a few things. So... Would America have traded with Russia? I mean, they sort of did anyway, but would they have traded with Russia to a bigger extent? Because what America was doing in the 1920s was they were inflating the currency supply. That's why you get the booming 20s, the roaring 20s. They were inflating the currency supply and they were uh, loaning out loans to Europe, Germany especially, but also Britain to some extent, and as a result of that, that's what caused the boom in the 1920s, which led to the crash of 1929 and then the depression of 1930s. Well, supposedly the Soviet Union was immune to that because they were a closed or more of a closed system. But if they had been a more democratic market economy, in theory, they would have been success. I can't even get the words out susceptible. Sus I can't even normally say that word, but I can't for today for some reason. Anyway, they would have been in trouble if that had happened, and thus they would have been affected by the Great Depression. So you wouldn't have had the rapid industrialization anyway, because 
what the Soviet system basically did was just went, right, forget every consumer, we're going to build factories and war machines and, and you know, stuff like that. You, well, you wouldn't have really had that because, well, there's, I mean, in a, mar a typical market economy, the consumer gets the first choice, right? And what what the government does is decides, well, instead of giving to the people, what we're going to do is give to ourselves because, you know, people talk about uh, governments that invest in the economy. Well, it's not none of that is investment. What a government does is consume resources that otherwise would have gone to the consumer or would have been invested in the economy. Instead, they've been siphoned off from the consumer to the government. And that's why socialist regimes end up falling, um, apart from the incentive problem and apart from the fact that you have no economic calculation in a socialist system, you, what you also have doing is the government takes resources from the economy, essentially, and puts it in its own economy and then consumes it. And everything it builds is consumption rather than production. And that's why you see the basically the market shrinking in a socialist economy, because it is all it's all going to consumption. Because what a consumer would do is go, I want something, therefore there's demand for it, and then somebody would respond by building factories or whatever to meet the demand. Well, in a, and that's therefore you got production, then you got consumption. In the socialist economy or a government economy, you don't get that because everything that the government does is taking from the consumer. And so it's taking it away from the production of what is actually needed and put it into something that isn't, such as guns, tanks, planes, battleships. Uh, roads to nowhere, um, health services that don't work, that sort of thing. And that's exactly what the Soviet Union did. Well, you wouldn't have had that to the same extent in a Russia that wasn't uh, Soviet. So would they have had then a better economy overall? Probably. They wouldn't have had collectivization. Because let's not forget, Lenin, when he got in, he just basically annihilated the economy. Um, literally, I'm actually doing a video regarding that, but just to kind of sum it up, uh, he got in, he said to the farmers, right, you need to sell to the cities at less price for your goods than you would have got if you just sold to the market. The farmers were like, well, we're not doing that. So they got bags of grain, put them on the, on the back and went on the trains to uh, Moscow or other cities. And then Lenin was annoyed that they didn't sell it to the government, which is what he asked. So he then ordered that the bagmen be shot. <laughs> And then he sent troops out into the fields uh, and plundered, basically plundered the countryside. And then you have peasants revolting and all this other stuff going on. So it was basically a civil war within a civil war. And that was, he also tried to collectivize, but not properly. And oh, it's a just absolute mess in the, in the Russian civil war. But basically there's a period of like two years where... Lenin just kills the economy, absolutely wipes it out. And that's why he has to go, right, We this has failed somehow, but it's not really failed. It's just we need more capitalism in order to get to socialism so or, or communism. And so he then goes back and does his new economic policy, the NEP. So as a result, he wiped out the economy. People were actually fleeing into the forests because that's how bad uh, the situation was. So you wouldn't have had that period... You still would have had a civil war, possibly, but I, it's unlikely that the the uh, land, for certain, would have been as devastated as it was there. Industrialization didn't really happen until the late 20s and then 30s, and it was rapid, but it was also rapid in the wrong areas, because again, there's no way to calculate in a socialist economy when you have fixed prices, everything just, there's no there's no way to calculate value. So as a result of that, uh, they industrialized and they industrialized things that they may not have needed or they may have needed, but there's no way of knowing. So, you you know, they're industrializing for the wrong things. It's called malinvestment. And that's what the Soviet Union was doing. So you had things being built which didn't need building and things that were being built which you did need, but not enough of and, and so on and so forth. And, and you had people like the purges and stuff like that. You had it just a mess. So you wouldn't have had any of that. So what you would have seen is more consumer products. You would have seen a better economy overall. You wouldn't have had the collectivization regimes 
which just was a mass slaughter. Um, it's unlikely starvation would have happened to the same extent it had happened in the Holodomor, etc. And not just the Holodomor in the Ukraine, but around Russia as well. You wouldn't have seen that to the same extent because, well, you would have had an open economy. People would have been trading with the Soviet Union, which is what they weren't really doing. And so more food could have come in from abroad. You also didn't have the censorship going on, like, you know, the Red Cross couldn't get in, etc. Or if they could, only slightly. And so, because I believe as well, the Polish, some of the Poles had fled into Russia at some point, um, and they were trying to help out the Ukrainians, and the and Stalin and the regime thought they were spying, which they might have been, but then it was like, well, we'll, we'll cut them down, we'll, we'll protect the border. And so as a result, they, they stopped food getting in again. So yeah, it, it's, you wouldn't have had any of that. So the economy, certainly in... Uh, the Ukrainian area or the North Caucasus and all the other areas which got starved, that would have been better off. You wouldn't have had the industrialization of the wrong things. And I also suspect you probably would have seen more of an economy in the uh, west of the country rather than the east, which could have gone against the Soviets had they broken, uh, had the, uh, the axis broken through. But you then wouldn't have had Poland split in two because the uh, Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact split Europe up. Well, it's unlikely that a democratic, non-Bolshevik, but democratic market economy, it's unlikely that, that that regime would have sided with Hitler. It's probably more likely they would have sided with France and Britain, at which point then you would have had... And that also Poland possibly would have been more inclined because to side with the Soviets or the Russians because well there's I mean Lenin invades Poland and thus Pilsudski fights back uh, a great book on that is Warsaw 1920 and so you wouldn't have had that Poland might have been freed and then there's no there's no hate going on for their eastern neighbor because the Russians weren't Bolshevik, they weren't Marxist, they weren't trying to take over like they were during the revolution. So maybe the Poles would have been happier to work with the Russians. So you might have had a better, better alliance prior to Hitler's invasion of wherever. So that could have stopped the invasion of Poland or Hitler would have had to do something else. I mean, he still probably would have been aiming East anyway, because that just seems to be what he was doing in Mein Kampf. But... There's no way to know. So, mm, I don't know. I, I just... But let's just assume, let's just assume that everything happens the way it did, sort of, and let's say it was 1941 borders. Let's just skip ahead to that. Well, what you would have had, probably, since the Bolsheviks weren't in, you would have had a stronger economy, but you would have had a weaker military in terms of size. Because, again the Russians probably wouldn't have had as big a standing army. Now, they would have maybe mobilized, but would they have had all the tanks and all the planes that they've had? Not that it mattered, because as we see on the first day of Barbarossa anyway, the Bolsheviks lose all their tanks anyway and uh, their planes. So maybe they didn't need that many planes in the first place. You probably would have had a more organized army. It wouldn't have all been at the border because... Again, the idea was, well, we'll push right to the border because we're going to attack and we're not going to question this idea because we can't because Stalin will kill us So, because you, you would have had the purges. So maybe you would have had a smaller army in Russia, but a better organized army, which could have put up a bit better of a fight at the beginning. However, then you've got the disadvantage of could they have moved all the factories because they wouldn't have had a socialist regime they would have had a more well they might have still had a socialist regime but they wouldn't have had it as as socialist as they had so would they have been able to move the factories like they did probably not would they have had uh would they have had the ability to then recruit people give them rifles and then you know put them into combat as quickly as they did probably not would they have had well, they wouldn't have had the KV tanks because the KV is named after a communist. So clearly they wouldn't have had that. But maybe they would have had something similar. But it's unlikely because, 
I mean, again, the, the rapid industrialization would have helped that. I, it's really hard to know because the problem is that in a market economy, you would have less incentive to build war machines. You just don't have that. And that's the point of the market economy is to stop you going to war. So they probably would have had less of that. However, they would have been richer. So maybe they could have imported more. And would they have had alliances with other powers like the United States, for example? Uh, who knows? So I don't know. I, I actually suspect, I mean, and also the regime would have been weaker because Stalin had absolute hold and control over the regime. It was a socialist, central social, socialist regime. So if the Germans had attacked or if the Axis had attacked, then Moscow would have fallen, or even if Moscow hadn't have fallen, the regime might have fallen because it would have lost popularity. And I don't know. I, it, hmm. I don't think Hitler would have got into power. Um, and I don't think, even if he had managed to, I don't think he would have managed to get to the situation where, where they were in 1941 anyway. But even if they did that, they would have fought against a better organized uh, military in general. However, if they had smashed through that, then potentially you could have seen the collapse of a regime. But then the Russian you know, army was more would have been more organized or better organized. There wouldn't have been the purges. And so maybe they could have fought more effectively and maybe chose different tactics that altered the campaign. It's really hard to know. And also, would, let's say, Romania or Hungary or any of these countries have sided with National Socialist Germany? You would have also had the Baltic states, which would have been separate. Finland wouldn't have been against uh, the Russians. Nah, I don't know. I really don't know. It, it's The problem with this is that it's so much speculation. You can't predict the future. You can't even predict the, fa uh, the past if it had gone alternate. You know, this is an alternate timeline. So it's really hard to judge. It depends on how you frame it. But I don't even think Hitler would have got into power had the Soviet Union not been in existence. And I don't think he would have gone... He wouldn't have got the popularity he needed to go east. And even if he had, I think the Poles and the Russians may have sided together with France, with Britain, to stop Hitler before this happened. And even if that didn't happen, the Poles probably wouldn't have been invaded from the east. And so, yeah, it would have been a tougher time anyway for Hitler and the regime. Um, because let's say he did take over, take over the whole of Poland. Well, the Russians know he's coming, right? And so they're going to, you know, if he turns around to try and attack France, then they could invade at that point. So he has to keep more on the border. And yeah, it depends. What I, It depends. It really does depend. But I actually think the Soviet Union would have had, a, well, the Russians would have had a stronger, a much stronger economy and actually had an economy uh, if they uh, they hadn't like destroyed it basically with the Soviet Union, and they would have had a bigger population, which has its pros and cons in a war, and they would have been richer, and so maybe they could have bought more firearms rather than build it. You know, think about lend lease. They could have actually gone, hey, America, send us more than you are sending. We'll pay for it, and thus, you know, um, maybe. Uh, they could have allied with other partners around the world. I mean, it would have changed the Far East as well. I don't even know. Don't even know. But, yeah. I think the thing is as well, a market economy is more... It can adapt a bit better. A socialist economy is very rigid. And so what you could have seen is a market economy up until, let's say, 1939 then a rapid mobilization, then a, a quick industrial... Because, you no, know, let's not forget, it, it took Stalin, let's say, four or five years or five years to industrialize the first time. So why couldn't the market economy done that later without having gone through the process of destroying your economy in the beginning? Um, it makes more sense to do it that way. And, yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough one. But I've given you a few things to think about. So I'm going to leave it there. It's just a quickie today, but I, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you guys think. I don't like alternative scenarios. I don't like it. I'd rather deal with the facts and see what, you know, if it was like, oh, what would have happened if Lenin hadn't gone in? Or it would have been like, yeah, the market economy would have collapsed. It wouldn't have collapsed. And you would have had an actual economy. That's easy. But once you go 20 years down the line, there's no way. There's no way. But yeah, let's see what you guys think. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.